Which you guys, today we're taking a look at possibly the best single ball computer that you can buy. This is the Orange Pi 5 Plus. It's a new release from Orange Pi. And again, we're going to be using a case to put this into as well to make sure it's nice and cool. This is from Geek Pi, and this is a nice little Perspex type case with all the fittings in here. And we're going to go through and show you how to put it all together, and we'll have a little look at it. Now, this model comes with the Rockchip RK3588 with the 8-core 64-bit processor, which is plenty powerful for a lot of your daily tasks like streaming or even some like gaming. This model also supports the M.2 slot, which is for 2280 SSDs. And we also have on here uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on here, dual ones on here. We have this Type-C connector here, and we also have three HDMI ports, and we also have two USB 2.0 ports on this side here. So one of them HDMI ports is HDMI in, and two of them are HDMI out. On this side, we have our 40 pin expansion header, here and then on this side here we do have some more usb ports here usb 3.0 we have two of those and there's a bunch of other stuff on here like your microphone ir receiver and uh, your power button and a bunch of other stuff like a usb 3.0 type c connector there as well and on the other side we have tons of different uh, uh ports on here which we can use on the bottom we have our micro sd card slot here as well which you can use for your SD cards. We have an M.2 slot here for your NVMe drive, which is PCI Express times four. So the eight cores are divided. Four cores are the A76, which is up to 2.4 gigahertz and a maximum of 2.6 gigahertz. And we have four cores of Cortex-A55 and they're running at 1.8 gigahertz. Like I said, RAM on this one can be up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. You've got four, eight and 16 models here, dual channel. And we also have that NVMe slot on here as well. You can pause the video at any time looking at the full specs, and I'll leave the links in the video description for you. So let's go ahead and get this a little case here and put it together so we can keep this nice and cool, uh, because obviously this is going to be getting pretty hot if you're going to be testing it for certain things. So I want to make sure that we're getting the best out of this little uh, single ball computer. Now let's put all this together. So this is basically the case that we're going to use on this one. There's plenty of them to choose from, but this one has a Perspex top, which you can mount a fan to, which is going to keep that nice and cool. Let's just go ahead and mount that fan. You can use the screws that come in a kit. Very simple and easy to do. Gives you a screwdriver as well in a kit. A bit fiddly, but once you get this on, put the nut on there and hold that nut while you tighten the screws down. And then you should have that fan mounted uh, to the top here. You want that blowing cold air onto the actual uh, processor here to keep that nice and cool. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this screw. There's four little screws here that we have to attach with the uh, bolt here. I've done one of them already, but you can see it'll look something like this. And we have those two little cables, which will go to our 40 pin uh, layout here for the power. So let me go ahead and uh, do the rest of these, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is basically uh, mounting this to the actual uh, single ball computer. Now you've probably noticed there is no instructions here, so you've got to be used to doing stuff like this. So it's pretty self-explanatory, a lot of this stuff here. So I've just mounted those on there now, and you can see we've got the four screws with the nuts on there to hold the fan in position. This is the bottom part, which is a smoked sort of uh, perspex here, which looks quite nice. I'm going to fit those all on here. There's four of them to do. There's these little standoffs here with the screw. Would have been nice to see some... Uh, rubber feet for the bottom of this unit here rather than having screws here maybe they can add that to the kit at a later date but if they don't you can always buy them on amazon there's plenty of them there you can put felt pads on the bottom or even rubber little uh, stickers on there and stick them on the bottom so it should look something like that and we're going to stick those all around and then we'll be ready to mount this onto the actual single ball computer it should look something like this and there we go that's now going to fit lovely there so now we need to Put the brass standoffs onto the other screws that are poking through here and this will basically give it a little bit of height so it just misses the single ball computer here so i'm going to finger tight these up you don't have to overdo these and again we're, once we've done that we can just put the top on just to see whether that fits lovely and it does and we're doing the right thing here so all we need to do here now is so i'm going to remove this because i need to put on the little heat sinks for the uh, GPU and also for the memory and stuff. So let me go ahead and take that off there. 
Now we will have some uh, cold air blowing down onto this. So let me just put the power onto this as well. And if you're not sure how to do these, there's plenty of uh, stuff online, documentation that will tell you what these pin layouts are, which will give it power. You can either give it five volts or you can give it uh, less voltage if you want to. Uh, but you can see here, I'm gonna put these onto here. And once we've done that, what I can do is put these sticky bits of these on these sticky pads. Now these are not the best ones in the world. You can get better ones on Amazon and places like eBay if you want to, but this comes as a kit. So I'm just gonna use these and hopefully this will keep the CPU and GPU uh, cool. But with that fan blowing cold air over there, that should be good enough for what we're trying to do in this video. So I've done all the actual uh, heat sinks on the actual board here. So I'm just gonna put this on top now and I've plugged everything in. And that just leaves me to put the nuts on top to hold the top into position. And we're pretty much good to go from here. So you can still get access to the actual board itself and the pin layout. You can still get access to it, but you can always undo those nuts and remove this uh, to gain access to the board if you need to. There is a little reset on there as well. So just remember, if you're looking for a case, make sure you get one that you want to uh, go for. There wasn't many to choose from, and I wanted to get this delivered as soon as possible. So I went with this one. As long as we're getting cold air blowing over there, uh, chips, that's all that really matters. So I'm going to just tighten this up now, finger tight. And if you've got a little uh, spanner set, you can tighten those up if you wish, or some pliers. It's entirely up to you. But that's good enough for what I want. And I think that looks pretty nice. That's going to be good enough for what we want here. Very simple uh, sort of case design, but very effective. And as you can see here, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll with this one. So let's go ahead and uh, get some cables in it and power this up and see what it goes like and see what the temps are like. There's quite a few operating systems that you can use for this. You can use Linux, you can use Android, and there's a bunch of different third party operating systems that you can run on these as well. So depending on what you're after, I've got some power to this right now. Uh, this is just a the standard power cable. I've got the capture on here as well, and I've got some other cables in here. I need to put in the keyboard and mouse, and uh, stuff like that, but pretty much we should be good to go. Now remember, this is probably one of the most powerful single board computers you can get on the market, and uh, it's gonna be able to play all of your PSP games and other types of retro games that you like to play. Again, this is the, straight from the Play Store, which is the real racing uh, game here. Looks pretty nice, really smooth as well, and uh, you can play this uh, pretty enjoyable. If you want to get this, you can get this on the Play Store. Or you can get the APK file if you want to and do whatever you like there and sideload it if you want to. If you want to use Aptoid to download these, you can do. If you don't want to use the Google Play Store, if you want to detach yourself from that sort of stuff, you can do. But yeah, really smooth as you can see here. No problem at all. I have got a bit of a assist on this one. I can feel it steering a little bit for me. You've got some retro games here as well that you can play on here if you want to. It'll have no problem with playing PSP games or anything like that. So. If you're looking for games like this to play, then by all means, this is going to be ideal for that. And these are upscaled to three times as well, so it's having no problem playing these. And if you want to do some streaming on here, you can do. I'll do some streaming in a second so you can see what that's like. Remember, this is a single ball computer. I'll put it on 4K here and stream this down to see whether we get any drop frames. I'm pretty sure we will do with this little single ball computer. And again, if you're looking for, say, playing movies, I mean, this will play movies like no problem at all, 1080p, really smooth, 2K possibly. Uh, but let's have a look here. This is 4K. There's a bit of stutter in there and a little bit of um, pixelation here as well on the 4K streaming when it moves around. And we get some drop frames here, as you'd expect, but it's still very impressive for a single ball computer. Let me just drop this down to uh, 2K here, 1440p, and we'll see what that's like. And again, that's really smooth now. There's no um, pixelation there, no stuttering or whatever. So it can handle 2K there, no problem at all. Struggled a little bit on the 4K, and I'll drop this down one more to 1080p so you can see roughly what you get with 1080p as well. Let's click OK here. And remember, uh, YouTube compresses and does a lot of stuff with their videos once they're uploaded. 
but as you can see here, pretty nice. So plenty good for streaming uh, 1080p on YouTube or even playing some 1080p movies or maybe a bit higher. But anyway, I hope this video has been okay for you. This one has been the Orange Pi 5 Plus. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two, or tier three. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.